All right, hello and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at AliExpress. And what AliExpress is at its core is it's essentially a consumer front for Alibaba. And if you've never heard of Alibaba, um, it is essentially uh, a place where manufacturers can go on and put on their products that they manufacture um, and you can order from them. So if you're trying to develop a new product, they'll even do design work for you. Um, so if you're trying to develop a new product or um, you want to do all sorts of different things, a lot of people in the e-com world know Alibaba very well. Um, I've used them quite a bit in the past. And a relatively new site, um, AliExpress, um, takes a lot of the frustrations away from using Alibaba. One of the big downsides of using Alibaba is um, you're negotiating for price um, and you typically have to order in bulk. Um, they also don't offer a fast shipping option and some other, some other downsides. And of course, it also depends on how these manufacturers are. Each one has their own different um, different areas. So the way you can think about this is most of us here in the States, we know what Craigslist is. Alibaba is Craigslist for manufacturers. AliExpress allows you to purchase products uh, from a single standpoint. So instead of having to order an entire container or large boxes or whatever and have a significant amount of cash up front and also a place to store this, AliExpress allows you to very easily purchase one. So as you can see here from the website, they have all sorts of different categories. They have all sorts of different products in here. Some of them are awesome. Some of them are not so awesome. And we're going to talk about a little bit later in this course how to distinguish um, a good product from a bad one and also a good source from a bad source. Um, but AliExpress will also allow you to do what's called drop shipping. So typically when you order something from China, it'll come over either one of two ways. It'll come on a plane or it'll come um, on a boat. And as you can imagine, a boat is not very fast. Uh, a boat is the cheapest option, but typically those will also come over in containers that are palletized. So that is a lot of product um, and it can take anywhere from a fast boat typically takes three to six weeks. Um, a slow boat, which of course is cheaper, can take anywhere from um, a couple of months to four months. Um, of course, they can also take longer than that. You also have port, you have customs, you have all kinds of stuff um, that you're having to deal with. Whereas AliExpress takes all of that out with what's called packet shipping. It's drop shipping. And AliExpress people are very um, open and they do a lot of drop shipping. Um, and like I said, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in this course. Um, but it's designed for smaller orders. So it allows you to purchase one or you can purchase uh, you know, a couple at a time. You don't have to purchase um, you know, a, a significant amount like I mentioned. Um, and drop shipping, just so you know, is a w form of shipping that allows you, the manufacturer to ship it directly to the customer so you're not having to touch it. Um, and there's a couple of things that we'll talk about like I mentioned later on in this course about how to do that. Um, but AliExpress is going to be the back end. This is going to be where I show you how to get all the product to source. Um, and of course, AliExpress isn't just for Shopify. It's not just for your public facing uh, website. It can also be used for e-com sites like Amazon um, and other retailers. I mean, you can also go on here and purchase things for yourself if you want. Um, you also get uh, Shopify free for 14 days. Um, so as you go through this course and you get everything set up, you do have 14 days to try this. Um, and it is a completely unlimited trial once you set up. So you can, um, you can go and list your products. You can add your domain. You can um, start selling products in those 14 days and already um, eat away at that $30 a month that you're going to invest in Shopify. Um, so as far as getting started, just click this giant getting started button up here and then... Um, it's just going to ask you for your email address, a password and your store name, and you click create store and you're off and running. That really is all there is to it. Now, once you get through that process, you do have to verify your email, make sure that it's all working. Um, and once you've done that, that's pretty much the entire setup process. Um, I've spent a little bit of time offline here, kind of setting up the basics of the store. Um, so it's a little easier for me to walk through. Um, but as you can see, it's very, very easy to get started with Shopify. So 
To start selling our products, we need a couple of basic pages. So I'm gonna walk you through how to create those pages really quick. Um, and then in the next couple of videos, we're gonna talk about how to design our site um, and then we'll actually start looking at products. Um, so the first page that we're gonna need is we're going to need a contact page. So um, as you can see over here on the left side, we have all of our orders, our products, customers, reports, discounts, and apps. Um, and this is gonna be through whatever sales channels we happen to have. And you'll notice down here we have um, a sales channels pane and the online store is gonna be here by default. I've also added Facebook and Amazon. You can also add by clicking the plus button here, you can add all sorts of other options here. You can sell on Pinterest, you can sell via Messenger, you can sell on your own website if you want. Um, you can even use the point of sale. Um, so you can sell uh, products in real life, um, physical products in real life. Um, but first let's click this online store here and let's get our contact us page um, set up and running. So I'm gonna click pages here and I'm gonna click add page. And here's our title, here's our content. And so I'm gonna fill this out real fast. And I'm also gonna change the template here. You'll notice uh, the template is based on the theme and all themes are gonna have a page.contact page. This is gonna put the contact information in the page for you. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fill this out real fast and I'll see you in just a second. All right, so I have all this filled out here. You can see contact us. I've put a little bit of context here up that up at the top um, and my typical recommendation is is be true to yourself be true to your store um, I have a personality here so I kind of put that in um, in the content section um, and I also tailored it toward my site my recommendation is um, people are gonna know the size of your store uh, they're gonna know that you're not a big giant um, monstrosity of an online store um, and people don't mind at all smaller stores so uh, be true to your store be true to yourself and don't uh, try not to make yourself sound bigger than you actually are they're gonna see right through that you also get with every page that you make and every blog post that you make as well um, you're gonna get a search engine listing preview you can edit the SEO if you want but to be totally honest with you I've never had to do that um, Shopify does a great job of creating that for me um, you can set pages to publish at a specific date. Um, you can do the same for products too that we'll look at a little bit later on. And then the final step for your contact us page is uh, changing the template to page.contact and then click save. Once you click save there, you can click view and this is what our contact us page is gonna look like. You'll see it's pretty simple. It's got the title up here, the content that I put in, name, phone number, and message. Now this is gonna go to the email that you set up um, as the admin email. You can also uh, go into settings down here in the bottom and change that. Um, but again, there's no uh, fancy setup required. This is all there is to it. And it's gonna send it to that email um, that you have set up on your account. So a couple of the other pages that we're gonna have to have to sell products online and to promote products um, is going to be a refund policy, a privacy policy, and a terms of service. And whenever I set up e-com stores um, for myself or for clients, um, it is a huge pain to try to do this. These um, these are not exactly easy to, to create if you've never done it before, especially. Um, but I do have good news for you. Shopify makes this super, super easy for you to be able to do. So if you uh, click settings down here at the bottom, and then once you get to settings, click the checkout button here and scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a whole bunch of options. We're just gonna skip all those for now. And you'll notice here that it has a section for refund privacy and terms of service statements. Now, the best part about this is I've already clicked these buttons here, but Shopify will generate these for, for us. And it's gonna be a standard um, refund privacy and terms of service policy. So if you just click the button here, click each one of these buttons, it'll generate this text for you. Now, I'm going to put this on a page because that's typically what I like to do and I'm also gonna show you how to add it to the bottom of your site. Um, this will also show up on the checkout page as well. So you wanna read through this and make sure um, that it's what you want it to be. Um, I do offer a 30 day return policy that's gonna be standard, um, but feel free to change this. This is a text area, so if you wanna change it, you absolutely can. Um, but 30 days is pretty standard. 
it's going to have um, the majority of the information that you need in here, and it's going to cover you um, for not only um, yourself and your business, but it's also going to make um, selling products on Amazon, advertising directly to these products a lot easier. This is actually a requirement. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and I'm going to copy here. I'm going to copy the privacy policy and the terms of service policy. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my online store here and I'm going to scroll down and hit pages again. And just like we created a contact page, I'm going to go through and create our refund policy, privacy policy, and terms of service. So it's as easy as clicking add page here, typing in our title, pasting in our refund policy text. Um, since this is a regular page, I don't have to change the template over here. You can see this right here and then I'll click save and our page is saved. We can also view it here. This is going to be a pretty boring page. It's going to just going to have a whole bunch of text on here. Um, but as people uh, try to purchase products on your site, they will probably want this type of information. Um, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to also add in the privacy and terms of service pages um, using the exact same process. Super, super easy. Copy and paste. All right, so now I have my privacy policy page and terms of service pages set up and ready to go. Again, super easy, copy and paste. Not very hard at all. Shopify makes it easier on us. So typically what my recommendation is going to be is to put these at the bottoms of the pages. So you'll notice here I have privacy policy returns, terms of service, and contact down here at the bottom. And this is what's called a footer menu. So I'm going to show you how to add those in here real fast. So if we go to navigation... And this is also going to be contingent upon the theme. Um, by default, the theme that you're going to use is going to be debut. And we'll talk about themes um, in the next video on designing your site. I've changed mine over to Brooklyn because it fits um, my theme a little bit better, my, the style I'm going for. Uh, debut and Brooklyn, all of the Shopify themes are going to have a footer as well. So I'm going to click navigation here. And you'll notice I have a footer menu. So I'm going to click on that. And I've already added these in here, but it's as easy as clicking add menu item. And then I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to click page here, and then I'm going to select the page that I want, returns. And then I'm going to hit save menu. And once you add these in, you can, of course, change these. So I'm going to move returns up so that it's at the very top and contact at the very bottom. Perfect. Save the menu. And once you save that, if you go back, and reload the page, any page on your website, anywhere from the home page, uh, products page, any of those pages, you'll now see that you have a menu. Now this is the positioning and the formatting is all gonna be dependent upon the theme um, of where this goes. Debut is gonna put it horizontally here. Um, the theme that I currently have puts it vertically. Um, so actually in the next video, we're gonna take a look at um, theming your site and make designing it, making it look good for your customer. Uh, Shopify does a lot of the work for you um, and they're going to make a good design um, using a base theme um, or using a theme from their store. Uh, some of them are free, some of them you can pay for. Um, the majority of mine, I have honestly used free themes. Um, they have quite a few and there's also a lot of customization options. Uh, the themes that I typically use are image forward themes. You'll notice uh, my manly men's theme here um, is very image centric um, and it's very, very simple. Um, again, don't get bogged in the, down in the details of designing your site. Um, the whole point of this is to create a business, um, not so much spend hours and days on the design of your site. Um, as long as it's user friendly, um, it's legible, and you're using um, basic design principles, um, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, again, you want to use high quality images, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Um, you want to start with a good theme and things like that. But again, don't get bogged down in the details. You'll notice my store here is very, very simple. Um, and a lot of the uh, stores that I've built, actually all of the stores I've built have been very product focused. 
focused. The whole point of this is to feature the products. So I try to let the design and everything else get out of the way, which just makes designing it much, much easier. Um, so let's take a look at themes here. So I'm going to go to the back end here. Um, by the way, if you do ever need to find the back end, once you're logged in, you can hit visit admin. There's also a customized theme up there at the top. So here I am under sales channels, under online store and under themes. You'll notice here by default, it's going to use the debut theme. Um, which is going to look like this themed in my shop. Um, and that's what I started out with. And then I, I searched the store um, and found the theme that I'm currently using. Um, so if you want to look inside the store, the debut theme is very, very good. Um, you can also explore free themes here. And you'll notice that there's quite a few um, free themes. A lot of them, again, are gonna be pretty simple. Um, and they're gonna be very image forward focused. Um, but these are professionally designed um, shop, Shopify themes that Shopify gives you for free. You can, of course, also visit the theme store. Um, if, you if you don't find one of the free themes tickles your fancy, um, you can go in and purchase a theme for you. Um, but again, it's very, very rare that I've ever actually done that. Um, typically, only if a client has a specific need uh, will, I, will I go in and purchase a theme. But there are quite a few um, purchase themes here. Um, they're going to come in various different styles. Um, there's also going to be even more free themes as you look through here. Um, you'll notice Jumpstart isn't on, um, isn't on the free themes section as well. Um, so once, you, once you've selected a theme, once you've found a theme that works for you, um, you're going to want to customize that theme. So I'm going to, once you activate it, which is as easy as clicking publish theme here, you can also preview it to see what it looks like um, before you actually publish it. This is what the uh, debut theme looks like, which you'll notice there's a few things missing because um, I'm not actually using it. Um, but once you uh, have selected the theme, click customize theme here and it's going to give you a whole bunch of options inside here. Again, I'm going to remind you to keep it simple. Um, and especially as you start, just work on the basics. Um, add in the things for your homepage, add in the navigation, add in all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're going to look at that here in just a second as well. So first, let's talk about images. Um, there are all sorts of different sources where you can find images. You don't need to worry, to worry about product images. I'm talking about images like what you see flashing on the screen right now, the, the main slider themes um, and images like that, maybe images for your blog post. Uh, there's a couple of different places you can do that. Um, to be honest, you can Google search stock photos, great place to start. Um, and you're going to find free and paid images there as well. Uh, Getty images is another great option. The main thing that you want to keep in mind as far as images go is you want to make sure that they're royalty free. Uh, you don't want to be getting in trouble with, um, with someone else's copyright. So I'm going to do men's lifestyle just to kind of show you what I'm doing here you'll notice that um, I'm just typing this into Google and this is one of my favorite tricks to be totally honest with you if I go to images right here you'll notice I get a whole bunch of lifestyle images so I can click on some of these um, and I can visit the page I can also up here if I do stock it'll actually take me to the the stock pages so this one right here is on a stock website. Um, a great way to do this here is using Google's image search tools. So if you click tools right here and you do image rights, you can click labeled for reuse. Now, you for a Shopify store, you can't use it for non-commercial or non-commercial reuse with modification. Uh, but Clicking this option here will give me quite a few images that I can still use. You may notice some of these are currently on my site. Uh, labeled for reuse with modification. Uh, that means you're changing something about the image um, and they'll give you the rights to be able to do that. So this is a great way to find images for your website uh, very quickly, very easily. Again, a whole bunch of different options as far as getting stock images. Uh, you can use uh, places like Getty Images, if you want to search them for free. Um, there's also uh, Adobe Stock. 
uh, Shutterstock, all, all those type of sites if you want to pay for them as well. So you'll notice here that I have found four images for my theme, and that pretty much makes up the entire theme. Um, you'll notice the other images are actually products, and we're going to take a look at how to get those images here in a little while. Um, so as far as my homepage here, I've um, set up my sidebar menu, which on the homepage, I've actually turned it off because I want it to be full screen. Um, the header, uh, this is the main text up here. And so a couple of things about the header and the logo, you can actually go and create your own logo if you want. Um, one that looks very nice. You can use uh, different various software for that. Um, but to be totally honest with you, what I've done here is this is just the text. There is no logo. You'll notice right here, there's no logo. Um, it's just the the text, Manly Men, um, and I've chosen a, a good font for it. Um, then you'll want to make sure you have your main menu up here, which it's going to do that automatically for you. And then click back here. And this is a slideshow. Most of the themes there are going to have a slideshow. This is where you'll upload your images, which is as easy as clicking add slide and click upload image. And you can click choose right there. It's going to upload the image for us. Uh, you can also choose the text color. It's going to alternate between the dark and the light. Um, and you can, of course, change those options too. Uh, what dark means, what light means. Um, you also have a subheading text, which in this theme is this right here. Uh, you also have a heading text, which is the larger text right here in the center. You also have the button text and where the link should go. So you'll notice here if we look at um, some of these other slides. Um, this one, I've, I've done a couple of these to kind of show you what it looks like. This one, I have no text on it at all. It just says shop now. Um, so it gets straight to the point. Some of these others, I do have... Um, a subheading text and a heading text. And again, I've changed very few things about this theme um, and it looks very, very professional and very, very customized for us. Uh, and you'll notice here as well that you can actually feature products up here in the slider. I've chosen to just take everything to the, to the main store. Um, but as I flesh this out, I could, if I wanted to add products up here, um, click the slide image right here You'll notice here's our subheading, our heading, and our button text. If you click slide image, or slide link, excuse me, it's going to, let me close that out. Um, I have the option of taking it to a collection, taking it to products, taking it to a certain page, a blog, or a blog post. Um, so I'm gonna take this to products, and I'm gonna take it to all products, because I want them, I want all these links to take it to the base store. So once I have that, I'm gonna hit save, and I'm gonna back out here. And you'll notice here, as I go down um, the page, I have a couple of things. So I have a text section here, that's this right here. So I can click on that and change the, change the text out. I can add links in there and do some basic formatting. I also have a collections list. So this features three of my collections that I have. Um, it also has a featured collection. Um, and this is a collection specifically for featuring, so for the website or, or for the homepage. Um, and of course, just like everything else, you can change the way uh, these look, just kind of tinker with it a little bit. You can also drag and drop these by grabbing right there, and you'll notice that um, the changes are shown live on the page. Um, it also has a newsletter function, which is super, super handy. By the way, this doesn't require any external uh, sources. It's actually going to go all inside the Shopify backend. If you want to add a new section, you can. Um, you can add images, uh, text, videos, uh, you can even add custom HTML in there. You also have the footer here, and in there I've just simply added the footer menu. Um, so that's as far as you really have to go with your theme. If you click over here to general settings, you can change the colors, the background color, text color, um, all the drawers, um, things that pop out um, or fly over. Uh, you also can change the font. So I changed the font here to make it a little bit more um, fitting with my demographic. Uh, you have the headings, you have the accent, then you have the body text. Um, you can also change the cart page, what it looks like, whether it's a drawer or an actual page. Um, let's see, the drawer looks like this right here. So you'll notice over here it slides out instead of redirecting to an entire page. Um, I prefer the drawer because it allows them to keep shopping. Um, it forces them to actually 
click checkout down here versus routing to another page and then uh, they have to go out. So it encourages people to stay inside the store and that's a default option here. You also have your social media uh, that you can add in. Once you add those in, then you can add them on to the various places on the page, whether um, it be at the very bottom or the very top, depending on the theme. Um, you also have the favicon up here and you have the checkout process as well. You can have different banners or logos. Again, what I've chosen to do with my logo is it's just the plain text. Um, it fits in with the theme very well. It looks very nice um, and very professional. And again, I didn't have to go out and design a logo specifically for it. So again, as we go through the, the theming process, finding a theme, choosing colors and fonts, um, I built all of this in less than 30 minutes. Um, that was my goal. And as you can see, it's a very professional store. Um, it looks very nice. Um, and the whole point of that was to make sure that I didn't spend too much time designing the site. I mean, I am a designer, so I could have spent months designing this and, and working with everything. But Shopify does such a great job with with creating design that actually works very, very well and looks very, very professional. With a couple of changes, the only thing I changed was adding images up there, changing the slider, changing the fonts, and changing the color. Um, and I just changed the color to a very muted black on white. Um, so again, don't get bogged down in creating a fancy design, spending too much time with it. Um, the theme will get you 80 to 90% of the way there to begin with. So I highly recommend you start there and you can always change it later. It's very easy to change as you can see. Before we get started there, let's talk a little bit about the best kind of products to find um, on AliExpress that are going to be best for our drop shipping method. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind here. It's going to be price um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that here in a second. We also need to keep in mind weight. Um, we're also going to look for products that have high quality images. Um, those are going to be very important because we're actually never going to touch the product. Um, so we're going to need high quality images provided by AliExpress, um, which the majority of them have it on there. Um, but we want to make sure that they have the images that we need. We also want to stay away from branded products. Um, so anything that has a brand that you're going to recognize on it, um, whether it be Ray-Ban or um, you know, Apple or something like that, a lot of those branded products will actually be counterfeit. So avoiding it all together and getting unbranded products is the best way to go in my experience. Um, the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure it can't be found in a major retailer. Um, and that's kind of why we talk about finding a niche um, and solving a pain point or a passion product. Um, the biggest reason for that is because if they can find it at a major retailer, um, then you're going to have even more competition. Whereas if you find, and I've got a product here I'm going to show you here in just a second that fits all these bills, um, but if you can solve a problem or a pain point um, or find a passion product, so uh, something like dog collars or uh, dog jewelry for, uh, for pet owners, um, or in my case, it's actually going to be uh, motorcycle owners, jewelry for motorcycle owners. Um, you'll notice from the site that you looked at before, my Shopify site, I am specifically targeting um, men's type of products. So everything from jewelry to drinkware to, to clothes and shoes that you can't find that are unique. I'm looking for products um, that you can't find at Walmart, you can't find at Target, you can't find um, anywhere at a major retailer. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to review our supplier to make sure that they're going to uh, ship our product and do exactly what we need them to do. So let's talk a little bit about price. The biggest thing here that's going to make it worth it is we need to have a good margin. And what I mean by a good margin is typically I'll look for somewhere in the sub five dollar uh, category. The four dollars is really uh, the sweet spot, and then I can turn around and sell that product for twenty dollars. Um, you want to keep it in that impulse buy range. Um, and an impulse buy, most people, uh, reach, research has shown that if it's under $50, then most people are going to buy that without really even thinking about it. And that $20 range is even better. Um, the lower the price point, um, the more likely people are going to buy. $20 for most people um, is a couple of coffees. It's really not um, a big deal for them to purchase. 
especially if you're solving a pain point or a passion product and it's it's not something that can be found somewhere else so my my piece of advice is to find something that you can purchase for under four dollars that you can turn around and sell for around 20. now product weight we are shipping this product and so shipping is going to become a major component to our products we want to target the e-packet shipping area um, that's going to be a faster shipping method and so that's going to be a product that's not heavy that's not oversized and not fragile heavy and oversized is going to cost us a lot more in shipping and it's going to eat into our profit and then fragile of course it can eat into our profit it's also going to increase our returns um, if they get a product that's broken if it's glass for example um, if they get the product that's broken then we're going to have to eat that return and as far as the supplier goes, this is one of the biggest components that a lot of people miss. Um, reviewing the supplier, you go on and you see a cool product, that's awesome, that's great, but you never look at the supplier. They're the ones actually giving you that product. They're the ones creating it, shipping it, handling everything for you. So you wanna take a look at the reviews. You wanna take a look at their inventory level. You also wanna make sure that, you, that they offer e-packet shipping. The majority of them on AliExpress are gonna do that. It's gonna give you faster shipping. You know, We talked about shipping a product from, uh, from China, from overseas, which is where the majority of the Alibaba um, and AliExpress product comes from, can take anywhere from three to 12 weeks. Um, so e-packet um, addresses the slow shipping problem. Um, it's kind of a, a different type of shipping uh, that'll actually ship on a plane, but it's much cheaper than shipping something via UPS or FedEx. So what I've done here is I've actually pulled up um, a product that I'm gonna put on our site. And so you'll notice here um, that this is a Harley Davidson, which is huge for Harley Davidson riders. Um, it's a bracelet. And this is a bracelet that I can't find anywhere else. Um, it's not sold at a Harley Davidson dealership. It's not at a Walmart. It's not anything like that. Um, so you also notice here, the second thing is our price. So it's $1.18. I'll probably turn around and sell this for $16 to $20. I'll probably put it on sale. We'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later on too. Um, but we're going to, uh, to turn around and make a pretty nice profit on this. So the next thing I wanna take a look at is the shipping. So let's hit this drop down menu here and make sure that they offer e-packet shipping. And you'll notice here I scrolled down a little bit and it does have e-packet. You'll also notice it's a lot cheaper than the majority of the other options here. And it'll arrive anywhere in 12 to 20 days. Most of the time it really doesn't even take that long. But look, if you ship it via DHL, it's gonna cost $25.89. That's for one of them. Um, so the e-packet is a great option there. So that ticks off our next option. The other thing I wanna look at is, I wanna look at their reviews. So they have five star reviews over 168 votes. Um, so they're, they're a pretty good um, retailer uh, supplier here. Um, the other thing that we wanna look at is return policy, just in case. We also wanna look at the seller guarantee. Um, they also have good high quality images that we can grab. They have two nice little images here, a lifestyle image, which is huge. Um, and then also a single product image. The other thing that we're gonna look at is we're gonna look, uh, we're gonna hover right here on the diamonds and we're gonna look at uh, their various options here. So we have, they're from China. They've been open since March 31st, 2016. Um, not exactly very long. I will typically look for someone a little bit longer. However, this is a pretty low priced item. Um, so with other things in my store, I'll probably uh, take a small gamble on this because they do have such good reviews. Um, item is described 4.6 above average communication, 4.6 shipping speed, 4.3, all above uh, four point which is kind of uh, my main area. I, the other thing I wanna do here is I wanna scroll down in the, uh, the product description area. I wanna make sure I can download both of those images, which I can. Um, the other thing here is this is not a branded product. This isn't made by Harley Davidson. It just targets their demographic. Um, so this is a great product that fits all of our bills. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're, you're looking for these type of things. In my opinion, this, this product is on the fringe. Um, I'll typically look for a higher diamond rating. Um, and I'll typically look for someone who's been in business for quite a long time. 
Um, so they've been in business a little over a year. That's pretty good. Um, and their, their ratings are pretty good. That's why I'll probably um, take a gamble on them. Whenever you first start, um, you can uh, look for sellers that are over two or three years. Um, some are at five and six years. Um, that just signifies that they've been doing this a long time. They know how to do it. They know what they're doing. Um, a little over a year is a great, um, a great time as well. Um, so that's that's kind of the the range that I'll look at there. Um, so that's kind of trying to find products in your niche and verifying that we have a good product to put in our store. Um, so now I have my product set up and ready to go. I uh, am now ready to add this over in Shopify. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a couple of things. Really, the only two things I need are the main image. So I'm going to right click and save this. And I'm going to grab the lifestyle image as well. There's another image here, but it has um, some junk up here at the top. So I'm not going to um, I'm not going to use that one. And really, that's all I need from AliExpress. So now I'm going to go over to my Shopify store and I'm going to click on products. And I'm going to click on add product. And again, while that loads, we have a order price of 118. And if I use ePacket, my total price is 284. So that's a pretty good price. And I'm going to put this up for um, $18.99. And I'm actually going to discount it to begin with. So I'm going to put in my title here. And I'm going to type in my description. Again, I'm focusing on features. And typically what I'll do is I'll start with a question and I'll also add in some bullets here. So I started off with a question and I'm solving their problem. And so now I'm gonna add in some bullets. And so you'll notice here I have high quality leather bracelet. Well, that's a feature, not a benefit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tweak this up a little bit to turn it into a benefit. So I've added three bullets here. Typically I'll do three to five. I wanna keep this simple. Um, I don't wanna get too detailed. I don't wanna add too much information. Um, I can always add more information later, um, but my main point here is I want to get the point across. You also notice that I focused on benefits and not features. And again, this is an impulse buy. It's kind of a passion product for people who like Harley Davidson. So now I'm going to add in my images here. I'm just going to drag and drop my two images. Here's one. And here's the other one. And again, this is why it's important to find a supplier who has and a product that has very good um, images. And you can, of course, just drag and drop these. The larger one is going to be the first featured image. Um, and then it's going to list your other images here as well. Uh, pricing, I'm going to put $16.99. And I'm going to put compare at price at $18.99. And so what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna put it on sale for me. So again, I'm gonna run this for five to seven days. I'm gonna push some traffic to it. And then after that, I'm going to put $18.99. So that will move it back up to its normal price. But since I'm just launching this, I'm gonna do uh, $16.99. And I'm not gonna worry about inventory because again, uh, we're doing a drop ship method. And then our weight, I'm not really worrying about any of this other stuff. And variance is the other section that we need to take a look at. So what I've done here is I've set up a simple product. Um, it has no variance. There's no other options. Um, for example, if they had a brown leather version or a silver medallion or something like that, um, then that would be a variant. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, so we have our sales channels. It's going to be visible on all three, Facebook, Amazon and our online store. Again, the main point is the online store here, which of course you can change uh, by clicking manage right there. And I'm gonna add this to my collection. Since I do already have a couple of collections here, and it's gonna save these for whenever you have it, and then I'm also gonna put it in the featured on the home page there. And you can also add in some tags, so I'm gonna add in so I've added in my tags, I've added in my collections. And so what I actually wanna do here is I'm gonna click save and it was created successfully. The other thing I wanna do here is I wanna actually add a brand new collection um, in case I wanna feature similar products like this before. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click create collections. I click collections over here on the left side, click create. And I'm gonna type in, and I'm gonna select manually select products. 
Um, you can automatically select products, but typically I'm not gonna have a big enough store. So I'm just gonna click manually select products. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna go back to all products and I'm gonna click on my Harley Davidson here. And I'm going to now add in my motorcycle. There we go. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in, I've created a couple of uh, product types and you'll notice you can, if you wanna create a new one, um, for example, you can click add right there, but I already have a jewelry select uh, product type here. And the other stuff here, I don't really need to worry about. So I'm gonna click save. Product was saved successfully. So now I'm gonna view this and show you what it looks like. So here it is on my store. So we have the title up here. You'll notice it's on sale. I have add to cart here. And here are my two images. Now the way the images appear will depend on your theme. The theme that I have uh, kind of runs the images down the screen here. Um, and as far as a variant product goes, if you have different product variants, I'm gonna show you uh, this rosewood beast bead bracelet right here because it does have a couple of variants. You'll notice it has a lot of images. And once I have those images uploaded, you'll notice again I have you know three uh, three bullet points as well as a short description. I have variants. So once I start adding in a variant, I can click add right here. It's gonna add a new variant in. I can add color, I can add price, I can add all that kind of stuff. And then once I've added it in, I can choose an image. Um, and that will be an image either that I've already uploaded or of course I can upload a new image. Um, I can also change the price. So this single band, you'll notice all of these are dual band. This single band is a little bit cheaper. It's cheaper for me to purchase, cheaper for me to ship. Um, and so I've actually done it a little cheaper here on the website. You can also reorder these, you can edit them. Um, and of course you can click on them and change the, change the name. Now I've added in the color variant. If you wanna add in new variants, you can click add variant. And as far as options go, you have all of these options. So price, compare price, everything else. So a variant product is a little bit, a little bit more complicated, but really not that much more complicated. Um, and it does give your customers a couple of different options whenever they get to their product. And the cool thing about this is, is it does offer it as a single product. So you'll notice here that I have all these options here. I can change and it's gonna show me the actual image for that. And you'll notice it's automatically gonna scroll the page based on uh, what selection I have. So that is how you also do a variant product. So that is how you set up a product. We now have a couple of products on our store. Um, and it's super, super easy, as you noticed, um, to get these set up. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the basic store once you add a couple of products in, how to add uh, categories, how to add your products page, and all that kind of stuff. So let's first talk about adding the products to the homepage. So I'm gonna click on online store here. We're gonna customize the theme. And you'll notice here on my theme, I do have a collection list. I also have a featured collection. Um, so I am going to click on the collection list here and I'm gonna add in my collections. I can add a new collection by clicking the add collection button there and then adding in, for example, jewelry. Very, very easy to do. Once I have that done, then I just hit the back button. The other thing that I wanna do is I wanna do the featured collection. So you can change the headline by typing in right there, add in your collection, and I already have a homepage collection, which it's, uh, Shopify is gonna set up for you automatically. So I'm gonna select that. And if I don't already have products in there, I can click edit collection and add in products. Uh, but I do have products in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I have a couple of different grid styles. I have collage and I also have grid. And since I only have two products in here, there's really not that big of a difference. So once I have my featured collection set up, then I'm good to go. Um, you can add in more collections if you wanna have uh, a couple of different featured collections. And again, just like everything else, you can customize these, you can change these around. Um, the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna create your navigation. So you'll notice here on across the top on my store, what I have is I have home, I have products, categories, and contact. Um, the other pages that we set up before are down here at the bottom. So my product page just lists all of my products in a cool collage style. Um, my categories are gonna show me all the different categories. 
And you'll notice here that it's going to grab an image of a product that's already in that category. So you'll notice that's why whenever we went, whenever we created new collections, I didn't bother to set up new images. You can, of course, um, but again, my point is to get this store up and running as soon as possible. There's no uh, collections or there's no products in bar clothing or shoes yet, um, but I'll be adding those before I take this store live. So let's take a look at how we add that. So we're going to click uh, online store here. We're going to go to navigation and you'll remember this from whenever we set up the footer menu, but I'm going to click on main menu here and I'm going to add a menu item and I'm going to call it products. And this is just going to be a general products listing. And I'm going to select all products right there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, categories. You can also call this collections. I've chosen to call it categories. You can do whatever you want there. You can do collection and you can select all your collection. What I actually want to do is I want to do all collections right there. That's going to give me a specific collection screen. Now, if I wanted to add in, for example, bar, actually I'll add in jewelry and I can go to collection here and add in my jewelry and that's going to take them directly to that collection. And of course, just like before, we can also add in our contact page and here's page and select our page and that's contact us. So then we're going to click save menu down here at the bottom, go back over here, reload our page and we now have our main navigation up here at the top. So now that we have our navigation set up and we also have our product listing pages set up, um, specifically our home page. Again, you'll notice Shopify will do most of the heavy lifting for you. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go down here to settings and we're going to choose a plan and we're also going to turn off the password protection. So once you have, once you first set up your store um, and you start the free trial, it's not going to prompt you to set up a plan um, until you go in and you're actually ready to set things up for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click account right here. And right here is where I'm going to choose my plan. I've already chosen a plan. I've chosen the basic Shopify monthly plan. Um, but you're going to have the option of choosing that or the $79 elevated package. So once you've chosen a plan, now you can actually remove a lot of the restrictions. You can also remove the password protection um, from your online store. So to turn off the password, we're going to want to go to online store here and then click on preferences and scroll all the way down and we're going to untick this box. So you'll notice I've already, I already have it unticked. You can actually go to this page publicly um, and you have the ability to uh, turn off the password so then people can actually access your store. Uh, the password protection is great if you want to send it out to a family member, a colleague, whatever, and have them review your store before you actually take it live. It's a great place to do that. So now that we have our plan chosen and our password removed, the other thing we're going to want to do is set up our payment system. Of course, if you're selling products, payment system is very, very important. You're going to want to get that set up uh, to start receiving payments. So you're going to want to go, you're going to want to go down here to settings and then click right here on payments. And I typically recommend that you have two payment options selected. Shopify has their own Shopify payments that actually runs through Stripe. They have very low fees um, and it's actually a great way um, to get started. You'll notice you have Shopify payments, PayPal, Amazon Pay. You also have some alternative methods, some different payment processors, specifically if you don't live in the States. Now Shopify payments only works in the US and a couple of other countries. So if you don't have the option of using Shopify payments, then you'll have to use one of these alternate payment uh, services. You also have manual payments. So if you want to uh, take cash or you want to take a bank deposit, um, that's kind of complicating things. Shopify payments and PayPal are the two easiest. Amazon Pay is also really good um, if you want to offer that option as well. Um, I've turned it on. I've used it. I've used the other systems as well. Um, they're very, very easy. I'm not going to walk you through how to set up a PayPal account, um, but you can just click the edit button here and get everything set up. Uh, once you click uh, set up Shopify payments, it's going to walk you through adding in um, your, your bank information and some other basic information that they require to be able to take payments from you. So the other thing that we need to do is we also need to set up our shipping methods. So if we go back down here to settings and we click on shipping, we'll actually be able to start setting up our shipping 
uh, options. Now there's three different options that you can choose here. Um, you can choose a no shipping cost. Um, that's pretty popular with places like Amazon and a lot of the shipping uh, options are kind of going toward a no shipping cost. Um, typically what I want to do is I want to set up a system where I'm not doing a, a no cost shipping um, because typically what that means is one, it's going to eat into my profit if I don't raise the cost of my item. Um, and typically uh, I'll choose the realistic shipping cost. Um, and that's typically going to be, especially for our e-packet, um, whatever savings I make there, I'll typically pass on. Typically, it's going to be less than $3 to get that shipped. The third option, the final option, is a free product and you just pay shipping. So typically, you're going to raise the cost of shipping a little bit uh, to $5, 8 $10. So you're making a little bit of money. You're covering all your costs. Um, and this is typically a promotion tool. Not one of my favorites, but it is an option if, if you want to... Uh, get the name of your store out there. It's a good marketing method. Um, so as far as adding in a shipping cost, what we're going to do here is we have zones and rates. Um, so you can add a shipping zone. This is going to be domestic. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a shipping zone. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a two price system. So if they order one product from me, then I'm going to do a $3 shipping method. And that's going to be if they order under $20 from me. Um, so typically it's going to be one product. Now, if they order over $20, typically what I'll do is I'll double it and subtract a little bit. So in this case, it would be about $5. Um, so let me add in, I'm going to add my, in my price based rates. You can add in weight based rates, um, or calculated rates, but, uh, price based rates is the easiest way to do this. It also makes sure that everything is consistent. So as long as you're choosing smaller items that are lightweight, that are easier to ship and using you using e-packet, you do have the option of adding in a price base rate. Now you can get crazy with this. Um, you can add in as many items as you want. Um, but typically what I'll do is I'll do two and this is going to be standard shipping minimum order price is $0 and the maximum order price is $19.99 and I'm going to click done and my other rate I'm going to add in is going to be greater than $20. And so my minimum order price is $20 not $200. And my maximum order price is no limit. Now I can raise this if I want, um, but I'm going to leave it where it is. And I'm going to add in my rate amount. Missed that on the last go round. That's going to be $3. And then this rate amount is going to be $5. The reason I've done such a low shipping rate is I'm trying to mimic uh, the realistic cost. So you're going to have a higher cart abandonment. And that a cart abandonment is whenever someone add something to your cart and then leaves um, because for whatever reason. Um, in our shipping case here, it'll be because they think the shipping cost is too high. So you can add in $3 to all of your products and offer free shipping. Um, I, I typically will, will do a realistic shipping cost um, because it, it lowers the cost of the price of the item um, and it, it also puts a little bit of money in my pocket, but not too much. It just allows me to to cover a cost and really three dollars for shipping is is pretty reasonable. Um, so this is kind of how you uh, create your shipping zone. So now now you're actually ready. Um, hit your hit save changes up here. You also have the option here to add in different countries. So if you want to have a higher shipping rate to ship somewhere that isn't the U.S. Um, or you want to have a lower cost to ship somewhere, um, you can absolutely do that by adding in different countries. Um, and naming out your, your shipping zone. Me, I'm pretty much just going to target the U.S., um, so I'm not, not really going to offer shipping, uh, offer a different shipping rate because really e-packet's going to cost the same amount anyway. And then I'll click Save up here at the top, and we are good to go. And so now you'll notice under our domestic here, we have our standard shipping uh, for $3 and $5. So that's how you add uh, the shipping methods to your online store um, and that's how you set up your basic store our store is pretty much ready to go live here um, we have products in there we've set up payments um, we've set up shipping 
we now have everything in place that we need to start selling products. If you want to connect an existing domain, buying a new domain is as easy as clicking this button and Shopify is going to walk you through all of the setup process and handle everything for you. If you do want to connect an existing domain, of course, you can click this button right here and then type in your domain on the next screen. So I'm going to connect my domain here. So here's my domain, I'm gonna click next and it's gonna walk me through the setup process for this. I'm not gonna show you how to set up the DNS on the domain side, um, but if you use a service like Cloudflare or if you use a registrar, this is a little bit more of an advanced technique, um, but it's, it's not too complicated at all. And this one is hosted on GoDaddy, so I can actually use the Connect automatically, um, and it'll log into my GoDaddy account and get everything set up for me. But I want to show you the manual process a little bit. And so once you click the link, you'll get this page here, and it's going to have you change your A record and your C name record. So I'm going to copy and paste this uh, URL here, as well as the shops.shopify. So I'm going to go back over to my DNS, and I happen to use... Um, Cloudflare. So in the A record here in the drop down, I'm going to add in the IP address and then I'm going to click add record. And then I'm going to grab the C name and I'm going to do www and I'm going to add in shops.myshopify.com and I'm going to add record there as well. And what that'll do is it'll connect your existing domain and then it'll verify it. So then your domain will actually go to um, if you type in manlymen.com, it'll actually go to your, uh, your new uh, Shopify store and everything will be handled that way for you. Now, the other thing that you want to do to make your shop a little bit more professional is you'll want to manage the automatic emails that go out. So if you click on settings down here at the bottom and you click on notifications, you'll be able to change these emails. Um, and one of the biggest things that I will do is I will ask for review um, on a couple of the order pages. So it's gonna send out various emails, both to you and to your uh, customers. So here on the order information, this is sent uh, automatically to the customer after they place an order, order canceled, order refund. You have all these options here as well. Um, and so what I'll typically do is I will do shipping, shipment delivered is typically where I'll go in and I'll add in hey, if you love this product, uh, please give us a review for it. Now, you can always manually send an email uh, requesting a review. I'll, typically, I'll do that um, a couple of days to a week or two after, um, after they receive the product. Um, but I can add in right here. You'll notice this is a lot of, a lot of fun stuff here. Um, but I'll add in at the bottom, typically, I'll say, hey, if you'd like to give us a review, and you can preview it right here, if you'd like to give us a review of this product, please let us know. Typically, I'll put it right above this right here. So just to kind of show you my process here, I'll typically copy that uh, just to make it easier to find in the code here. And so there we go. So typically what I'll do here is I'll add in a new TD. So I'll add that in right there. And then, of course, I can preview it, make sure it looks good. Um, and sometimes I'll mess around, I'll add some bold, I'll add um, some image format or some text formatting to it, and then I'll click save up there at the top. Um, and so that's kind of how you can customize the emails. You can also customize which emails you receive and which emails you don't. Um, so for example, I, would, I might customize that a little bit more. First of all, I'd add a period there. Um, or I may, in add, I may add in the product page um, URL, which I can actually find if you click on liquid variables here. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique. Um, it does require uh, messing around a little bit of code, which I'm comfortable with. Um, but again, uh, you don't have to do this. You can always do it manually. Um, but I, I prefer to kind of put it in front of their face um, a little bit more often. Um, but you can customize which emails you send out, which emails you don't send out. And then, of course, um, the, the email information um, you can customize that as well. So this has been a look at making your shop a little bit more professional. So this is a little bit more of an automated process um, and it's gonna uh, link AliExpress to Shopify. Um, so not only can you track orders, you can pull in new products, 
um, and you can actually directly request a product be shipped um, and have certain things auto-filled for you. Um, and this service is called Obelo. And so if you go in your Shopify panel here and you go to apps, and there's quite a few apps that you can actually use to expand your Shopify store. Um, and they do all sorts of different things from adding review stars to tailoring your store to certain things like for example, T-Launch. Um, it allows you to expand your Shopify store. And so in here, there'll be everything from free um, to very, very expensive and everywhere in between. The majority of the ones that I use are gonna be free or a very low minimal cost. Um, but I would recommend that you, uh, that you take a look at the App Store if you want to start expanding um, and you want to start growing your store. Once you have a couple of sales underneath your belt, you kind of have a good feeling for Shopify. Um, taking a look at the store is a great place to go. Um, so it's going to be recommended for me, but it's Obelo. So you can search up here in the search bar if it's not set up for you. Um, but I'm going to uh, just click the Obelo app here. And you'll notice that it is zero dollars. Some of these will be a one-time fee. Sometimes there'll be a monthly fee. That if it is a monthly fee, it's just lumped in with your with your Shopify fee. Um, so pretty cool little things here. You can read the entire um, description if you want. Um, but I'm just going to uh, to walk you through the majority of the features that you're going to use for AliExpress. So I'm going to uh, allow Obelo to. Uh, manage my products, manage orders, and manage other data. Uh, just a security check here. And once I've verified that, it's gonna take me to the Obelo dashboard. So you'll notice that this is a different URL actually than the Shopify store, but once you link the two of them, um, then it's going to be a lot easier. Now, inside my Shopify admin panel, I can always access it right here um, and get back to my Obelo, or I can link the two. Um, so I have created my Shopify store, connected it, and so now we're actually going to find and add our first product and make our first sale. Um, the other thing is that I'm right now I'm using Safari, um, but actually whenever I typically do this, I use Chrome because Chrome has an extension that will link with Oberlo, and it will allow you to, once you're in AliExpress, it'll fill in the shipper information and do a couple of other things you can actually, um, from AliExpress, you can send new products and all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's uh, let's take a look here at adding a product from Obelo. So I'm going to hit this first panel here. I'm going to search products, and I'm going to type in men's jewelry here. And so you'll notice it's pulling over all of the uh, products from Obelo um, that is accessible here. You also notice it's going to list these things specifically for drop shipping. So it's going to give me the price. It's also going to give me the e-packet price. So I can get kind of a good handle on uh, the, the price for the product. So um, this product right here actually um, fits our, our criteria. It's typically below $2. Um, it's going to have e-packet shipping and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to click Add to Import List. And I'm actually going to... I'll refine my search here a little bit. Um, I can change the shipping price here um, to the United States. That just gives me a good uh, bar as to what the shipping is going to cost. All right, so the other advantage of Obelo is you can actually import multiple items. So you'll notice this, uh, this ring that I've chosen here is uh, encircled by a green box. That means I'm ready for import. And so I think I'll also import this one as well. Um, just to kind of show you how multiple imports work. Um, so once I have my import list done, and by the way, if you do have the Chrome extension, you can actually do this from AliExpress as well. Um, so you'll notice these are coming from AliExpress, but I'm not on AliExpress. I'm actually in the Oberlo app here. All right, so now that I've selected and I've searched, and you can add um, as many imports here as you want, I'm just gonna click on import list, and it's gonna show me my two products. And so what I'm going to do, the advantage of this is it does pull over the majority of the information. Um, but as we talked about in the previous sales uh, trainings, the listing that they have on AliExpress is not going to be nearly as good as the uh, name and description that you're going to come up with. Because remember, we're going to talk about benefits and not features. Um, so I'm going to edit these two a little bit. You'll notice once you go to the import list, you can actually select here and change these 
options. You also notice here that you can actually put in your collection. So I've added the jewelry collection to both of these. You can do all this um, from the Oberlo app. So now I'm gonna tap description here and I'm gonna edit these descriptions. All right, so now I have my descriptions in. You'll also notice it's gonna signify all the variants here as well. So the majority of these are going to be um, sizes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in um, a couple of different options. Uh, the skull ring is gonna come in black and gold. And so I'm going to update all these options, kind of clean it up a little bit. And the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in the price. So it's going to show me the cost. And on the previous page, it showed me the description. On the previous page, it showed me the price of the shipping too, uh, which is just under $2. So I'm going to add in my price here. You'll notice here we also have price and compare at price. So if you want to put these on sale, you can. So I've updated my prices here, and once I've done that, I'm gonna click over here to the images pane. You'll notice it's gonna pull in all the images from the listing, and so this looks pretty good. It's gonna pull in the pictures. I'm gonna just tick the boxes here. I'm actually, let's see, so I want the front and the side, and then also a gold image here as well. So this one is now ready to push to shop. So you can push the, the single one here to shop, by clicking this button, or I can go down here and edit this one and push them all to the shop. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna edit this one here real fast and I'll see you in just a second. All right, so I now have all my variants set up and I have all the information. Again, you're gonna to wanna to go through here and double check each one of these um, because once you push it through, um, you're gonna to have to change it inside Shopify if that's what you wanna change. The one thing that you don't have to worry about typically with this type of stuff is the SKU. You'll notice whenever we manually put in products, I never worried about a SKU. Um, you can start adding SKUs if you want um, once your store gets larger, if you need product inventory or something like that. Um, but I, I've never had to use the SKU here. If you do sell it on Amazon or something like that, it's going to create a, a SKU for you, uh, an Amazon specific SKU. Um, but for, for our purposes here, we don't have to worry about a SKU. So now my products are ready to go. So I'm gonna click this easy button over here, push all products to shop, gonna click yes. My import list is now empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to products inside my Shopify panel. And you'll notice I now have two new products, my skull and my diamond ring. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on skull men's ring. Um, I'm going to add a couple of things. Product type is jewelry. And so you'll notice it pulled in everything here, the price, all that kind of stuff. It also pulled in the images. So you just want to do a check here after you pull it in through Oberlo um, to make sure that everything looks good and everything imported um, the correct way. So there's all my images. There's all my sizes. My prices are all correct pulled in the collection. Um, so it looks like these products are good to go. So that's how you can use Oberlo to import your products. Um, once you sell a product, those sales will actually show up not only on your Shopify orders, but also on your Oberlo orders for any products that you imported. And once you have a sale, then you can actually uh, click a link here that will take you directly to the product. Um, it's going to keep the, it's going to link the, the, Ober, the Shopify to the AliExpress and you can click there and purchase your ring. And if you use the uh, Chrome extension, you, it will actually autofill for you um, the shipper's address. So super cool options. Um, very, very nice um, way to integrate. It is not a completely automated process, but it does streamline the process. Uh, very, very significantly, um, and it's it works quite well. So that's a look at Oberlo, how you can import in products, um, and then also how you can fulfill the products. Again, not a completely automated process, um, but it, it will streamline things for you, and it will make uh, your import and order fulfillment a little bit easier for you. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up a page to promote our products with, and I'm going to walk you through the very, very basic portion of that. I'm not going to focus on profile pictures and posts and all that kind of stuff, but I'll talk about it as we go along. So what you want to do is you want to go to facebook.com forward slash pages, and you want to click create page up here in the top right corner. And we're going to 
do a business and this is, the business is mainly men and we're going to click get started and that is really all we have to do to get our Facebook page set up and running now we can of course add in a profile picture which I'll probably do later and add a cover picture um, the profile picture is what's going to be shown um, whenever the ad is shown it's going to say that this is provided by manly men it's going to show the profile picture so I'll I'll add one of those um, you can also go through and, and change add content on here change different options and things like that I'm not going to touch that because the main point of this is to use it for advertising so you can easily create a new page as you noticed um, and get everything up and running with your advertising account then it'll come from from mainly men instead of it coming from your personal Facebook or maybe one of the other pages or businesses that you have set up. That is uh, half of the work right there. Setting up the page, I assume that you already have a Facebook account. Um, if you don't have a Facebook account, you're gonna have to create one. Once you create your account, it may look something like this. Um, this is your main page. Um, if you have a business account, if you have a personal account, you're going, going to mostly run your ads from your Facebook pages. Um, and really the only difference is, again, this has a few more tools, um, some more advanced analytics, and it, the main thing is it allows you to run multiple pages um, and multiple posts. So, so whichever one you decide to set up um, really doesn't matter. Um, the, the, thing, the steps that we're going to walk through in the next couple of videos are all going to work on uh, both your personal account and or a business account. Once you do switch to a business account and if you set up a business account to begin with, um, you cannot go back to a personal account. So just kind of keep that in mind. And for a little bit more information on the two different types of accounts, um, you can go to the uh, the Advisor Help Center, um, and you can just Google search this, or uh, right here is the path to get to it, um, business versus personal. So it'll kind of show you um, a few of the differences. Again, business is really only if you're managing other uh, people's pages, other people's accounts, and if you have multiple people working on your page or multiple people working on uh, one of your other pages that you may manage. Um, so that's a look at setting up a Facebook ads account. Very, very easy. Simple as clicking create an account right there and it will start getting everything set up for you. Again, just a couple of terms that you have to agree to and you will be directed um, to this page right here. And I already have an account so it's going to log me in, get everything set up. And it's going to take me to create a new Ad. Uh, we're not going to do this yet. I'm actually going to walk you through a couple of other uh, steps before we start creating our first ad. After you got everything set up, you should be redirected to this page if you clicked on create an ad. Um, so we're going to set up our Facebook pixel. Our Facebook pixel is essentially a fancy name for what allows us to uh, retarget and track our conversions. So this is something that we're going to put inside our Shopify store um, so that Facebook will know who is visiting our store as well as um, be able to retarget those people. It'll also track conversions for us inside the Facebook Ads Manager. So we're going to go to uh, under Assets, Pixels right here. I already have a pixel set up, um, but I'm going to walk you through how to set up your pixel and also how to get that over into Shopify. So click the big giant create a pixel button here. It's going to walk you through um, naming the pixel and then you click next right there. And once you have your pixel created, um, it's going to give you the install your pixel. So we're going to click on the solution here because we're actually using Shopify and that's listed. Um, you can also copy and paste this code if you're putting it on your website or whatever else. Um, but we do have the Shopify uh, button here and it's going to walk us through the steps. So we're going to go to our Shopify admin panel. There's also a video here, but I'm going to walk you through it. So we're going to get logged in over here. We're going to go to our online store right here and we're going to go right here to Facebook Pixel. Scroll down just a little bit. Facebook Pixel. We're going to go back to our ads manager. We're going to click enter your Facebook Pixel ID right here. Just a long series of numbers. We're going to paste it in right here, scroll all the way down, hit save, and now our Facebook Pixel is set up and ready to go. Again, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about what the Pixel can do in later videos, 
um, but this will allow us to retarget um, and it will also allow us to, the main reason is to track our uh, conversions and sales. So then we can start targeting those people. Um, so Facebook has a really, really cool tool called Audience Insights that allows you to narrow down target and see statistics on, uh, on a particular audience. Um, so you can access this through Facebook. Um, I have a business account with Facebook, so it may look a little bit differently. Um, functions pretty much the same way a business account does have a few more options to it. Um, but the audience inside tool will look very similar. It may just be a little bit different color. Um, so looking at this, it's actually going to show us I have no um, audience created here. I have no uh, selectors uh, changed. So this is just general statistics on who uses uh, Facebook. And 54% of uh, people on Facebook are women, 46 are men. And it's going to kind of show us um, some different lifestyle, relationship status. 31% uh, are single, 49% uh, are married, um, job title. Um, it's, it's just going to show us a lot of different types of information. We can see page likes here. So the number one category is going to be retail and con consumer merchandise. That, that kind of makes sense. Um, so let's start digging into our, our audience, our demographic. So I'm going to focus on my store specifically. So I'm going to add in uh, men's fashion. And so you can kind of see here now it's switched over to 88% men, 12% women. Relationship status skyrocketed. It's now 53% versus um, let's see, versus 22% um, that are married. Um, education level looks like 67% is going to be college. So let's narrow this down a little bit more. Let's look at page likes over here. If we look at interest, men's fashion. Um, let's see. Yeah, this all seems pretty... Uh, pretty standard, pretty straightforward. Um, Vin Diesel, Dwayne The Rock, Will Smith. Um, let's go with men's uh, clothing. Let's add that in there as well. And it's going to reload our uh, target demographic here a little bit. And so let's click over here to purchase. Um, so it's going to give us a good estimate of retail spending and online purchases and purchase behavior. It looks like uh, men that are interested in these things, men's fashion and men's clothing are gonna be um, less likely than the median of Facebook to purchase certain things. Food and drink is, is pretty negligible. Subscription service is right on par. Let's see, not really concerned about a vehicle here. Um, so let's go back to page likes. And so what we're doing here is we're just finding out information about our target demographic. I'm actually going to switch this over to men. So let's take a look here at the men's fashion business page, which is the number two mo or number one most liked um, with people who have these interests. All right, so the other thing that I want to do here is I'm going to remove these two. And we're gonna try some other different variations here. Let's go into shopping and fashion, fashion accessories, jewelry. Um, because I do have quite a bit of jewelry on my store here. Let's look in shopping. Let's look at, well, let's look at this first, then we'll look at online shopping. Um, so page likes, Amazon, Walmart, Family Guy, Kevin Hart. Adam Sandler, interesting top categories. Again, retail and consumer merchandise is going to be Amazon, Walmart, Target. Uh, let's see, demographics. Rule Adventure is going to be an interest. Getting established. Um, what it's doing here is it's this graph means that the blue bar is the interest. The gray bar is the median of Facebook. So uh, whenever I look at lifestyle, it's showing me the higher likelihood um, and how much higher over the median of Facebook. So urban diversity, 21%, from foundations, metro mix, climbing the ladder, city mixers. 
Let's see. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at activity here. All right, device users. And again, they're mobile only, uh, even higher than, than the median of Facebook. Um, and we're actually going to target uh, Facebook mobile whenever we start doing our advertising. You can take a look at household income, um, home ownership. Let's see, it's actually less likely that they're um, less likely than the mean of Facebook to own a home, uh, but they are more likely um, to be a renter than the mean of Facebook. Home market value, spending habits. Uh, primarily cash is a little bit higher. Prim primarily credit card is uh, down. All right, so now let's uh, remove this. And again, I'm just getting a better picture. This is a little bit of trial and error. Um, I'm just getting a better picture of what our target demographic is. Let's take a look at clothing. So this is a little bit on how to use audience insights. And as you'll notice, it's a pretty general tool. It's just going to kind of give you some recommendations of maybe pages that uh, people in your demographic have liked or, um, you know, what their, where their location is, what device they're using, um, their household, purchasing habits, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it will also help you determine product viability. For example, if if nobody is is interested in your in your target demographic, but this will give you a better picture of who your person um, is going to be. And my recommendation, and what I always usually do with this, is I will typically create an ideal um, purchaser for my product, and I'll typically write it out in a in a Google document or something like that. And I'll write out what basic criteria they have. For example, for men, manly men, my shop. Um, I'm targeting a uh, man between the ages of 46 and 40, sorry, excuse me, 26 and 49 um, with a little bit of disposable income. Um, they're going to skew a little bit more single. Um, they're also going to skew a little bit more in um, urban areas, um, a little bit higher population and things like that. Um, they're going to have a little bit more disposable income. Um, they're going to care about, shall we say, the finer things in life. Um, so these are the kind of things that you want to think about. You want to you want to have your target demographic. Uh, this category is relatively broad um, because of the type of shop that I've chosen to have. I have different types of products on there. Um, but for example, I'm going to, uh, if I was looking at the the pirate ring that we set up a couple of videos ago, um, what I would do is I would actually put in that they have an interest in men's jewelry as well as um, pirates um, or skulls or something like that, something that would be related um, and try to develop a picture there. So typically I'll do it not only from a shop level, but from a particular product level. So every time I put in a new product, I'll actually use the audience insight tools and then also the advertising tools that are built into Facebook to determine the perfect person for that. Um, and I actually, every time I create a new product and advertise that new product, I create an entirely new audience. Um, unless it's perhaps maybe just a different color or something like that. But every different type of product and every different type of audience is going to have, um, is, is going to be targeted differently. Um, and that has given me the, the higher amount of conversions um, because I'm not spending money targeting to people um, who just generally like men's jewelry or men's shoes or whatever. Um, they like certain elements, certain things about um, something they're looking at more specifically. For example, taking the pirate ring, the skull ring that we looked at earlier, if I just target everyone who likes men's jewelry, um, I'm probably just going to splatter it across the board um, and I'm going to get people who are interested in regular wedding bands as well as people who might be interested in the in the pirate uh, or the skull ring. So if I target people who uh, like both, um, then I'm actually hyper-targeting them and I'm going to have a higher conversion rate. I'm going to get it in front of, more likely to get it in front of the people um, that would actually be interested in it. So this has been a look at the audience insight tool. Um, so we're going to talk in the next video about turning those ideal customers into buyers. So we looked at the insight tool and that allows us to find um, 
percentages and statistics based on our what our our intended audience is looking for. Um, but turning that into targeting uh, requires a little bit more meth uh, a little bit more method, um, a little bit more uh, work and a lot more research. Um, so let's look at uh, people who like a page. So in the previous video, we looked at people who like men's fashion page. And that's awesome and great. And there's going to be, you know, 12,000 people that like that page. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're a buyer. So somebody who looks at a specific page does not mean that they're going to be a buyer especially if it's a general page like that. So typically what I'll do whenever I start looking into targeting is I will group my pages together. So for example, looking at men's fashion gives me a great place to start, but then I'll start targeting things like uh, things of products. So the difference between that, for example, let's take um, a watch. So we look at men's style. Um, and that gives us a very good base category. But whenever I start adding brands into it, like Rolex or watch deals or um, fossil or specific watch brands that prove um, that they're interested in a specific product, that is much more specific and it shows that they are in the market, have been in the market, or it's an ongoing style, it's an ongoing thing that they like to purchase if they've liked a brand. So that's a difference between a general product page versus a brand page. And so just to give you an idea here what I'm talking about, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do men's fashion, fashion, and so this, and by the way, this is the ads manager. I'm actually creating an audience. We're going to talk about this a little bit later on, but I wanted to uh, wanted to use this to kind of drive my point home. So you'll notice here we have an estimated uh, daily reach of 530 to 3,300. Granted, this is, of course, based on uh, my, my daily ad spend, which I haven't customized at all. But this is a relatively broad category. The audience size is very large, about 160,000 people. So inside men's fashion, um, if I'm going to target, uh, for example, my skull ring, I'm going to put in here uh, and then I'm also going to put in pirate. The movie, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, and then it's going to give me uh, a little bit more options down here at the bottom. But now what I want to do is I actually want to use uh, brands. So I'm going to put in men's ring. And that really didn't give me very much, but what I do want to do is I want to use something, things like pages, um, things like uh, ring brands and stuff like that. All right, so what I've done here is I've added in men's fashion, and I also uh, narrowed down my detailed targeting. So first, they have to be interested in men's fashion, which is 1.2 million people, but they also must match at least one of the following. So badass jewelry, David Yurman, which is a jeweler, specifically a men's jewelry jeweler. Um, they also do women's jewelry. Uh, Skull and Bones, which is another page. So that brought our potential reach down to 21,000. So taking it from men's fashion, targeting it and narrowing it down even more, this allows me to get this in front of people who might actually be interested in my specific uh, men's jewelry. And I've, I've, picked this one because it's a little bit more complicated. If I were to do um, some of the watches or some of the bracelets or something like that that I have in my store, it's a little bit easier. Um, for example, a watch I could put in men's fashion and then I could put in brands like Fossil. Um, I could put in uh, Rolex, pages like watch deals. Um, I could put in different pages, different uh, interests um, that, that people are looking for. So 
to kind of, I did this to kind of drive my point home um, so that you can actually target specific people um, and increase your, your chance for conversion. The more detailed targeting that you do, assuming you don't limit yourself too far, there's, it's obviously there's a, there's a pendulum swing there in action. Um, but the more detailed you get, the higher your conversion rate and the more your ad spend is gonna work for you because instead of just plastering it all over to everyone that likes men's fashion or whatever your main demographic, your main targeting happens to be, you're actually gonna get it closer to people who are gonna be interested in your specific product. And again, I do this for every single product that I put up because the time and the effort spent to do this is absolutely worth it because your conversion rate is a lot higher. Your ad spend actually goes more toward uh, the people that are going to see it. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at actually setting up our, our ads account, our Facebook ads account, um, how to get set up, how to do certain things in there um, so that you can start your advertising. Finally get down to creating our first ad. Um, the, this is a very easy, simple process, so I'm just going to walk you through it uh, pretty quickly here. We're just going to click Create Ad. You can pretty much do this from just about every uh, page inside the Ads Manager. Um, the main point with uh, creating an ad is we're looking to convert. Um, so we're going to look right here in the Conversions area. Start over here. Uh, conversions area. and. Conversions is an action. So some of these are just brand awareness and reach. You're just kind of putting your ad in front of people. Um, you're trying to get consideration in this pane here, lead generation, traffic, uh, video views, apps installs, whatever it happens to be. But our main point here is conversion. Uh, product cat catalog sales, you can actually push uh, your Shopify products um, to Facebook and actually sell your products on, uh, on Facebook. So we are going to sell one of our products here from the store. So I'm going to grab the link and a couple of uh, different pieces of information. We're going to sell this Harley Davidson men's bracelet. So I'm just going to add this. Try to be as descriptive as possible. The campaign name here is something that only you will see, um, but it is important to, uh, to put in something that you'll remember. Um, so our main point here is conversion. So we're going to start setting up our ad set. We're going to walk through, as you can see over here, the steps, conversion, offer, audience, uh, placements, budgets, and schedule. And then we're going to talk about actually the visual portion of our ad. So this part right here is who we're going to advertise to, where they are, what they're interested in, and then also our budget and schedule. So we're just going to fill out this information here. I'm going to target people. Uh, located in the United States. That's kind of the uh, main demographic I have here. Um, age, I'm probably going to raise the age from 18. Um, there are Harley Davidson people that are interested in um, bikes, uh, but most people at the age of 18 cannot afford a bike, so the, the actual demographic is a little bit higher. So I'm going to raise this up to 21, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm not entirely concerned about languages. I am concerned about locations. I mostly want to uh, uh, want to target people in the United States. So I'm going to add in some detailed targeting here like we talked about before. Um, this is our, our main category. And then I'm going to, so I'm going to fill this out real fast. And then I'm going to walk you through kind of what I did. All right, so what I've done here, and I kind of walked you through this in the targeting uh, lecture we looked at before. Um, but what I've done is I've, Detail targeting here, I've put in uh, people who like motorcycles, who this is actually a behavior, they've purchased a new or used motorcycle, um, they work at Harley-Davidson, which I thought was kind of cool, and, and we'll, we'll see how well that works, and then their interests are Harley-Davidson, Harley Race, Harley-Davidson, I kind of did a couple of different spellings there, um, just in case they didn't spell it correctly on their profile, and then motorcycles. But what I also did is I did a little bit more detailed targeting. So these three here, um, especially this one, sells products on their pages. Um, so that was kind of a, my main goal, my main point, um, is to find pages that people have liked um, that is actually an owner's group um, and actually sells products on here. So the likelihood of someone owning a Harley 
um, and liking that type of jewelry. I don't know if you know very many Harley owners, um, but is is very, very high. Um, so that was kind of my main point there with the targeting. And so I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna actually name this audience up here, this ad set here. And I'm going to uh, scroll down, save this audience. And so you can do automatic placements or you can edit placements. Typically what I'll do here is I'll edit the uh, placements and I'll do mobile only. Um, I have my conversions go up very, very high whenever I do mobile only. Um, and I also want to remove the audience network here. Uh, different ad types I will actually put I will actually change this um, but I kind of want to talk about this a little bit here so what audience network is 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 it is those ads that Facebook uh, puts on other platforms so you'll notice Facebook and Instagram there um, these are other websites that actually advertise through the Facebook platform on their own website um, or they will place these ads in other ad networks. So these are kind of the ads that you see that once you visit something on Facebook and then it just kind of seems to follow you around the web, um, that is the audience network. Um, so you can kind of determine whether or not your um, product will work uh, well in this area, um, in the audience network. Um, that's kind of a gut call. Mine probably will, so I'm actually gonna keep this checked. To be honest, most of the time I actually untick that and it gives you some crazy warning how you're gonna lose 11% of your conversions. Um, that can kind of go back and forth. I've seen very good things come from the audience network. I've also not really seen uh, a lot of returns, but it, it can use up your, your budget. Um, so kind of make a judgment call there. Um, I'm gonna take the daily budget down to $5 and I'm gonna set a start and end date. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna push it out. For, I'm gonna run this ad for a week. So running this ad, well, that's August, so let's not do August. Um, so I'm gonna start this uh, today. I'm gonna end this in seven days. Um, I, you can run this ad continuously, but I always put a, a end date on there just in case I forget about it. I hardly ever do because I'm always in here checking it. Um, but I'm going to hit continue here Five dollars is a very, very good sweet spot. I did actually skip a step here. I need under conversions. I need to change this either to purchase or I need to change this to add to cart. Now you'll notice this is red right here. That's because we just added our pixel over in Shopify and nobody's used it yet. Uh, once somebody uses it, um, once somebody visits the website via the, the ads, um, that will actually turn to green. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different um, events here that you can use to track target, track and target. Um, you can do add to cart. You can also do purchase. Um, I am going to uh, click add to cart here. I kind of go back and forth on adding to cart versus purchase um, depending on whatever the ad is. Um, I have higher conversions whenever um, they add it to cart. That also means that Facebook tracks it um, whenever it adds to cart. So I'm I will usually also have abandoned cart recovery on there so I can actually retarget those people once someone uh, clicks the ad and checks out that Facebook pixel once it's able to be tracked um, then that will start to work so we're going to click continue right here we're going to use our our page our mainly men page that we set up in a previous video and that's going to allow us um, to target from uh, that page that will also may help us get likes as well. So I'm going to uh, click single image here, scroll down a little bit, and I've already grabbed the link of my Shopify product over here, this one right here. So I'm going to paste this over in the website URL. So I'm gonna skip the images section here. You'll notice I'm skipping over some of the more advanced things. Um, like a full screen canvas and things like that. I'm, I'm trying to touch on the, the basics here. Um, you'll also notice I did skip images. You're about to see why here in just a second because it's actually going to grab um, our product from the Shopify link and it's going to fill in um, a lot of this content and uh, make it a little easier for us. So I'm kind of cleaning up a little bit here. You'll notice that um, it pulled over most of the information, didn't pull over all the information. Um, so I kind of cut off a little bit of the text here and I did target 
men on my shop. It's kind of the main point, but I'm actually going to remove that in the headline. And I'm also, it didn't grab my images, which it usually does, but not always. I'm actually going to uh, download this image real fast and get this up uploaded. And if I did choose a carousel up here, I could actually put both of those images. Um, but I've just for ease of use, I'm actually just going to do a single image here. Um, and I've kind of cleaned up the headline. I've cleaned up the text. You can kind of see where all this lays out. Um, the headline's right there, and then all the all the text is laid up there at the top. You'll also notice that it's sponsored by Manly Men. Um, you can change the uh, the display link. You can change the news feed description, which is this right here, or the link. And you'll notice we also have our pixel tracking set up and ready to go. Um, so what we want to do is, remember, we want to focus on uh, benefits over features. And since we've already done that on our Shopify store, it's as easy as copying and pasting. So that is pretty much it that we need to do for our ad. Again, I did skip over a, a couple of advanced things, um, but again, unless you're uh, getting serious with creating your ad, um, and you've created a whole bunch of ads. I wouldn't really focus on some of the advanced things. You can offer coupons in here. You can do different types of ads. You can do videos. Um, you can target on the, on the audience network. Um, there's quite a few different options um, that you can do. I mean, you can get buried in the weeds here, which is the main point of running through this relatively quickly is to kind of show you the basics, show you the main things. And honestly, everything that I walk through is really the only thing that you need to focus on right now. Um, I am going to change the ad name up here at the top to kind of make it consistent across um, the all the other names that I've done. And so once we're done here, read the uh, disclaimer down here at the bottom and then click place order. And this will start running our ad. Let's see, it looks like it didn't upload my image. Um, but I'm going to upload my image real fast and then I will uh, click place order here. And it did pull it over, but I didn't get it inside the images uh, pane. Sometimes there's little bugs with, uh, with the ads manager. And so now our image is there. It was already there, um, but the ads manager didn't see it for whatever reason. Now it's right there. We're good to go. So we can now hit place order. And it's going to process our order. It's also going to put it in the review process. Um, with Facebook ads, you want to make sure you'll notice that I use the product image. Facebook doesn't like images with a whole bunch of ads on them or a whole bunch of text on them. Um, they want the product or an image to be featured. They don't essentially want you to use the image area um, as another way to just put a whole bunch of text. Um, so I featured the product um, there and that's, that's what I would recommend you do as well. Uh, sometimes I will put a watermark if I have a logo for my for my business. I'll actually put the watermark there. Um, but again, not not entirely necessary. Um, but if you do want a little bit more polish to it, you can absolutely do that. So once our ad's been placed here, we're actually going to uh, talk about analytics, Facebook analytics for our ad. And since our ad, which is right here, um, has we just launched it, so it has no results, no reach, no cost per click, I'm going to walk you through um, one of my other ads that I've run in the past. Um, so taking a look right here, we can see from our res results, we have 1,650 uh, clicks, we reached 41,038. So you can actually hover on the information mark here and it'll kind of show you, it'll kind of give you a little bit more information about uh, what happened. It'll also give you your cost per click and then it'll also give you uh, the status of your, of your account. And so the main number that we want to take a look at right here is people taking action. Um, this is also a PTA number. So this is 1,425. Um, we had 1,650 people click the link and 1,425 actually take action. So once they saw it on Facebook, conversion was very, very high. This was also a free offer giveaway, um, which is why we had uh, probably a higher than normal conversion. Um, so you'll, you'll also notice um, different things here, uh, like here's 7,332, and we had 6,550 people uh, taking action. Um, so some, some relatively large numbers here. 
And so the main thing that you want to focus on inside uh, the analytics and what you're looking at is uh, the results. This is your main section. Reach is awesome. It's really cool. But again, you know, you can have 114,000 people see it and three people, 3,000 people actually take action. That's the number that you want to pay attention to. Um, you can average out those numbers if you want. Um, it is, it's pretty cool to get a, get a good average. Um, but the main thing that you're looking at is the results and the people taking action. Um, there are a whole bunch of other um, numbers in here. You can do all sorts of different analytics. I'm not going to cover all of those. Um, but in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about uh, analyzing these numbers. So I wanted to walk you through what numbers you're looking at and how to look at it. You also notice here in gray, it'll actually tell you um, what your result is. So this one was add to cart, uh, post engagement, link clicks, uh, three second video, um, you know, their post engagement. Um, so there's depending on what you originally clicked, which we clicked add to cart there, um, that's going to give you your best um, your best number. This is what we're paying attention to right here.